Aloha. So we are going to start off by uh, talking about SI units. SI is abbreviation for the French term System International. System International. Uh, International System for Measurements. Now, I wish everybody in the world actually would use these things. Life would be easier. We're talking about units. When we talk about units, that's, uh, for example, measuring time in minutes or hours or seconds or weeks, measuring distances in centimeters or meters or inches, miles. Anyhow, there are different systems for, for measurements, excuse me, different systems for, me for measurements. You have systems where um, distances are measured in inches and feet and miles. And you, of course, you have what we have traditionally called metric, but metric has uh, metric is not a, a true system in and of itself. SI has uh, is a system where all the units go together, and in order to be able to to work problems, you have to be in the correct units in the right system in order for all the units to fit. Otherwise, when you add up numbers in different units, anyhow, they, they don't, your answer is meaningless. So the international system, uh, you have what are called fundamental units, and then what, what we have, uh, what we also called, uh, call derived units. For example, length. We can use the letter L, but it might not be, a, it might be a distance, it might be a length, it might be uh, a width, whatever. It's not a very good marker. But the fundamental unit for, that fundamental SI unit, base unit for length, is no surprise here. It's the meter, abbreviated with the lowercase m. It is not, not the centimeter. It's not the millimeter. It's not the kilometer. It is a meter. That is the fundamental unit. And that's important because if you get something that's in miles or inches or feet or yards or centimeters or millimeters, you must convert to meters before you can do the rest of the problem. Another one, time. Lowercase t. The symbol that we typically use. So time, the SI unit is, the base unit is the second. Not the week, not the minute, not the hour, but the second. lowercase s. Another one is mass. We abbreviate that with the symbol lowercase m. And this one's surprising. You might think that it would be the gram, but it's not. The SI unit, the SI fundamental unit for mass is the kilogram. You must be in kilograms before you can do anything else with it. So kilogram, lowercase k because it's an SI prefix kilo, and then g for grams. Okay. Now there are many other, many other um, fundamental units. The mole is a fundamental unit. The uh, coulomb that measures charge is a fundamental unit. Uh, Kelvin for temperature. There, there are, there, as I said, many, many other ones. But right now we're going to spend a good chunk of the year, believe it or not, looking at these and how they interact. Now, let's talk about derived units. When I talk about derived units, then these make a, may make a little more sense. For example, a derived unit, the variable, by the way, don't confuse variable with unit. The variable, length, time, mass. You can measure length. Again, you can measure length in meters, centimeters, millimeters, kilometers, miles, light years, that's a distance. Um, you can measure length, variable length, and all sorts of different things. But when you come up with a value, you need to attach a unit to it. Are you talking about inches or feet or meters? You know those all represent different sizes. One inch is not the same length as one meter. So the unit you attach to it is really important. It's really important to give it meaning. Okay, derived units. For example, area. You know area, like the area of a rectangle or area of a circle, whatever is going to be, well, area of a, of a rectangle, length times width. If the length is measured in meters, 
the width is measured in meters, then the area would be meters squared. It is a derived unit. It's derived of the fun fundamental length unit in meters. It's meters times meters. So that's meters squared. Volume, uppercase V. You might think that the SI unit would be liters. It's not. That's not an SI unit. It's a metric unit, but it's not an SI unit. The SI unit for volume, which is derived from length times width times height, length in meters, width in meters, and height in meters, is meters times meters times meters, <gasps> meters cubed. A couple others. Velocity. That will be a lowercase v. If you look at your speedometer, it, it measures your speed in miles, which is a, a length or distance, per divided by hour, miles per hour. Well, that's length over time, a distance unit over a time unit. Well, of course, miles and hours are not SI. So to turn that into an SI unit, we have meters per second. See how these are all derived from these. I'll give you a couple more. Acceleration, which is a lowercase a. That is the rate at which the velocity changes. So in your car, it would be the rate at how, how fast you're speeding up or slowing down in terms of the change in miles per hour. Say you go from 0 to 60 in 10 seconds, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds. That means that your car speeds up by 6 miles per hour every second. 6, 12, 18. So every second you're going 6 miles per hour faster. That would be an acceleration, but of course that's not SI. SI would be change in velocity. Your velocity is meters per second every second. Meters per second every second. Meters per second per second. Now, this can contract mathematically to meters per second squared. Or you take a fraction, the denominator, that's the same as seconds over one. And I can flip it over and multiply. So it's meters per second times one over seconds is a meter per second squared. And a couple others. Force, an uppercase F. The SI unit is a Newton, named after Sir Isaac himself. But at, at Newton, which is an uppercase N because it's the last, it's the first letter of his last name, a Newton is um, actually just named after um, a combination of kilograms times meters divided by seconds squared. It, so this is actually one kilogram meter per second squared. So it's a mass unit times an acceleration unit. But notice that you have to be in kilograms, meters, and seconds. If you're doing a problem and your mass is in grams or some other unit, you have to convert it to kilograms before you, you do the calculation. The same thing, your distances have to be in meters and your, and your times have to be in seconds in order to be able to do the calculation for force. One more, and that would be energy, which is an uppercase E. And you all know this from chemistry. The SI unit for energy is the joule, named after James Joule. Now, a joule, uppercase J again, first letter of his last name. A, um, Joule is actually a kilogram meter squared per second squared. The only reason these are important, because you're not going to really be using those very much, you're going to use Newton or Joule. The reason why they're important is to just tell you that if you're going to calculate something in joules, your masses have to be in kilograms. They have to be in kilograms first. Convert them if necessary. Your distances have to be in meters. Your times have to be in seconds in order for your answer to be in joules. All right? SI units. We are going to work predominantly in SI units. Okay?